Hello students, welcome to Savan Science Academy and we'll start today with the new chapter of biology that is Kingdom Plantae. So in the last lecture we ended with the biological classification chapter. So today we'll start with the new chapter that is Kingdom Plantae. Let's start. So in today's video we'll see the introduction about the Kingdom Plantae, how it was introduced and that we all know, we studied that in the first two lessons of the biology um, of 11th standard. So this is the third lesson in that first unit. Okay? So we'll start with the introduction of Kingdom Plantae. Now as we all know, uh, the Kingdom systems, the first system of classification was two Kingdom system given by Carlos Linnaeus. It already had Plantae and Animalia. But there was, an, uh, there was a problem with that because uh, fungus, uh, the entire kingdom fungus, some members of Monera and Protista, they were also included, which had cell wall in case of specially Protistas, uh, which had cell walls, whereas Monera and fungus, these were all already included in kingdom plantae by Carlos Linnaeus by this factor that they had a cell wall. Okay? But we know still there is a quite differences between them. So then came the three kingdom system where Hackel separated the protist. Then Copeland gave the four kingdom system where he separated the moneras. And finally Whittaker, uh, he separated fungus from it. So simply because uh, monera were excluded from kingdom plantae basically based on the cell structure. Because moneras are prokaryotes and we all know plantae they are eukaryotic. So on that basis they were separated from the Plantae. Protistas and funguses were still there on the basis of cell wall. Then these two were further separated based on the cell wall composition. The composition of cell wall of protist is different from that of plants because plant has uh, cellulose and pectin generally. Uh, hence they were separated. Fungus had chitin or fungal cellulose as its composition of its cell wall. So based on that and plus funguses are also heterotrophs. When we say kingdom plantae, they are all uh, under autotrophs. Okay, by the mode of nutrition, they are all autotrophs. So based on that, funguses, monera and protistas, they were separated from kingdom plantae, which were earlier in the two kingdom system. So R.H. Whittaker in 1969 obviously made that five kingdom system where uh, these all corrections were made. Plus, even during that time, cyanobacters, which were known as blue-green algae, okay, as we know, they come under U bacteria. So they were later on shifted to Monera. So even the so all these corrections were made by the five kingdom system. And today, uh, kingdom plantae has its own group of organisms which are exclusively autotrophs, eukaryotes, multicellular. So we'll see. We saw those features in the. Uh, first chapter itself, take your second chapter rather itself. Ki what are the basic points of uh, what is basic points in kingdom plantae? The cell type, cell nature, nuclear membrane, mode of nutrition, mode of reproduction. We saw that. So in the second lesson, we saw that. So that's uh, that is what uh, kingdom plantae is. Now there were many attempts made to classify this, and today also for better classification of plants. Uh, we use various systems of classification. Let's see the first three because these were the uh, what you can say initial ways to classify the plants. Later on, today in the today's system, we use many other forms uh, that is for taxonomy. As we all know, taxonomy is related with characterization, identification, classification, and nomenclature of that organism. Okay, so. Ye first time again it was obviously done by Carlos Linnaeus because he gave that two kingdom system and based on plantae if you see what uh, what were the features that uh, on which the classification was based on were only the superficial morphological features means all how the leaves are habitat color then uh, flower the nature of flower in that sense so based on the superficial morphological characters like the habitat in which the plant used to be color means the pigments to be precise externally number and shape of leaves how they are arranged on that basis plants were classified initially he also took into consideration the vegetative and the sexual means the number of androsiums in that flower petals 
so these were the what were the observable features actually so carlos linnaeus didn't go microscopically but what he could find superficially and morphologically visible he used those characters for uh, classifying those plants in that case but this system had some drawbacks like the vegetative characters were not acceptable i'll just give you an example like uh, say leaves uh, of the plant now in case of a region where there is less water generally a plant produces a small size of leaf if that same plant is put in a region where there is abundance of water you can see changes in the shape of the leaves okay so this can be uh, what you can say can't be used so these vegetative characters change based on the habitat climate which they are in so with absolute confirmation we cannot classify plants having their vegetative characters okay the size of fruit say it may vary from place to place of the same plant okay based on the nutrients available water available these characters somehow if that uh, one more thing say if there is limited supply of minerals in the soil and limited water plant growth is stunted that doesn't means ki the plant has short height it can grow up to a uh, a great height rather but if it has if, if it had all the nutrients available water abundant of water available that plant could have uh, easily grown taller with more leaves larger leaves larger fruits so these vegetative characters depend on the environment nutrients and all that stuff so these can't be taken with absolute certainty as an distinguishable characters that's why this system failed actually so uh, a better system was needed and that was the second system of classification that is called as the natural system of classification which was given by uh, george bentham and joseph hooker okay so these two apart from now obviously they considered a uh, little bit more characters apart from the one which was taken by linnaeus it, it was based on the natural affinities the external characters and also the internal characters like the ultra structures anatomy embryology phytochemistry now what do we mean by this so natural affinities means what were the features similar dissimilar features naturally observable features external characters that is apart from that it, it also included the internal characters like the placentation of ovary that is what ultra structure embryology anatomy means how the ovules are arranged in the ovary the shape of the ovary then uh, anthers bilobed the whether they are adhered to the petals or not so these all small small characters were taken into consideration of the, this what i said is of uh, what you can say uh, the flowers of those plants okay uh, those plants which didn't bear flower so about their roots anatomy that is how how are their roots formed they say Uh, in case of bryophytes we find unicellular rhizoids multicellular rhizoids so that were taken into consideration so ultra structure ts section cross sections of stem leaves were considered uh, for higher plants you can say the arrangement of vascular bundles were taken into consideration so all these factors were included so this made classification much better and we could easily classify two or more plants which had great similarities but based on this ultra uh character ultra structures and all this thing we can easily segregate them and classify it better phytochemistry the chemicals which they prepare like example when we say citrus fruits basically the all fruits basically consist of ascorbic acid citric acid that's the main constituent of it so based on that phytochemistry the chemi chemicals which the plant produce uh, whether they are similar dissimilar differences so we can segregate them or we can classify it better okay and this natural system was uh, given by bentham and hooker after that one more feature was added to it. no doubt this had a great prospect today also we use this okay into that added the evolutionary relationship okay and that that system is known as phylogenetic system which was given by angler and prantler uh, okay and it uh, it also consider the evolutionary relationship like whenever we classify in short uh, in short to just explain this i'll take the classification of plants see we don't write them in any order we write them in a specific order like cryptogams and phanerogams we never write phanerogams first and then cryptogams simply because it is written in the manner of the evolution 
cryptogams evolved first then phanerogams okay in cryptogams we know there are three uh, sub categories that is uh, we know algae bryophytes and pteridophytes so you have to write in this order only because in cryptogams first uh, organism that evolved were the algae after algae algae evolved into bryophytes bryophytes then evolved into pteridophytes then after that phanerogam started in which first gymnosperm started then angiosperms and in angiosperms also too that is dicot and monocots so you'll write always in this order because that suggests the evolutionary relationship how these plants have evolved okay so that is what is given over here next is numerical taxonomy so this is a now these are some new methods in which which are used to classify the plants but this is also quite simple what we have done is all the observable characters of plants and the internal characters that we mention over here all of these characters are given some numbers and codes so when we see a plant we enter that key, obviously here a computerized way is used to classify these uh, plants and so so what we have done in computer we have mentioned all the characters we have given the numbers to the, those characters we have also given some codes specific codes for that so if suppose i want to classify certain uh, plants so we'll, i will see each and every character in the plant whether it is observable or not and if it is observed which type and all that so, so i will enter the codes over there and i will just at the end sum up and i will see which all characters are say example if i would say uh, say i uh, i want to um, say i have taken leguminaceae family so i know what are the criteria of the leguminaceae family are if a certain plant i need to classify it i will see i will enter the uh, characters of that plant the codes of the plant and the computer will match for me ki this plants belong to which family or which category of plants so the number of characters maximum number of characters matching with certain category makes it ki this plant belongs to that certain family of plants so in this way with the help of numerical taxonomy it becomes easy for us we have already fed it the information into the computer we have all we have written all the possible characters that we know and we need to classify that organism uh, we have given it number and codes so we'll, when we see a plant we we'll just see the characters which it carries enter the codes into the computer the computer will match for us key to which category this plant belongs so that's uh, an easy way to do this cytotaxonomy that also helps me suppose if two closely related plants are there if you need to separate them uh, what you can say based on the similarities and dissimilarities into some subclasses or families or genus so you can use cytotaxonomy why cyto means uh, obviously here we take the help of the structures that are present in the cell like the chromosome number structure of chromosomes and all that stuff so we can use uh, the cellular information for our studies so if the chromosome number is matching most of the characters are matching i could say these are two similar species they get of the same genera might be of different uh, genera also but it, they are having great similarities and differences so we can point out the differences also from that last but not the least way of classifying this plant that we use today is the chemotaxonomy chemotaxonomy means the chemical analysis of the plant what are the chemicals what are the metabolites produced in the chemicals based on that also we can classify these plants into certain categories based on the similarities and dissimilarities of the chemicals which they uh, produce or secrete in that sense so based on so these are all these ways to classify plants it began with the carlos linnaeus system which is known as the artificial system and today also we use this natural system of classification in what you can say it has great importance for uh, which is used in classification of plants apart from that the modern way of uh, classifying it has also entered into this that is the numerical taxonomy cytotaxonomy and chemotaxonomy also we give a great importance to the evolutionary relationship how these plants evolved gradually so that was given by the angler and frankler so uh, these are all the ways to classify the plants or other uh, these are the systems of classification we use for classification of kingdom plantae so uh, we will just have a small look on the classification of kingdom plantae and then 
So, so basically, kingdom plantae is divided into two types that is two divisions kingdom plantae is further divided into two divisions that is the crypto gams and the phanaro gams now they have their own meaning crypto gams and phanaro gams cryptos crypto gams means these are uh, closed or gamus means marriage so closed marriages uh, in simple words if i put this that means how they how they sexually reproduce it can't be seen clearly through the naked eyes obviously they are at a microscopic level uh, they do re sexually reproduce no doubt in that but uh, closed marriages that means the sexual reproduction is not what you can say clearly observed by naked eyes so we need to look it at a microscopic level plus they don't produce seeds so seeds absent and hence fruits also absent in case of crypto games so remember no flowers actually it should start from here flowers are absent now if flowers are absent no fruits no seeds to go with it now in crypto games they are basically classified into again three thallophyta again that stands for algae thallo means having a thallus body phyta means plant in this this includes algae then bryophytes which are called as amphibians of the plant kingdom because these were the first plant who who at least tried to survive on land started growing on land and the last one is teredo phytas okay so this is how they evolved means initially algae from algae bryophytes from bryophytes evolved the teredophytes so cryptogams and phanerogams now phanerogams means open marriages simply because how these plants sexually reproduce can be observed very clearly because they produce a special reproductive uh, organ that we know as flowers and because of that their sexual reproduction is quite easy and it is easily observable now again obviously when we say phanerogams so flowers are present so seeds are present okay so here they produce seeds after sexual reproduction now gymno gymno sperms means in is the translation if we seeds mean gymnos means naked and spermas means seeds means simple these plants produce seeds but fruits are absent rather the flowers have androecium gynoecium they are not those typical flowers which have vibrant colors fragrance and all so these were initial so uh, initial stages of that uh, in gymnosperms so they had and uh, androecium gynoecium but they don't have they did uh, rather the gymnosperm uh, plants don't have those vibrant uh, calyx corolla like so even the seeds are naked means they have ovules but they are not covered under the ovaries and since ovaries are absent fruit formation is not seen and angiosperms angiosperms means simple these are naked seeds so these are seeds covered with ovary or uh, present in ovary covered with ovary that is fruit okay ovary that a uh, fertilized ovary is said to be fruit so uh, in that also we have two types in angiosperm dicot plants simply where the seeds produced have two cotyledons are uh, dicots and monocots the seeds produced have only one cotyledon so we'll see that in detail in the next lecture of this topic so this is the basic primary classification of kingdom plantae cryptos phanerogams cryptogams in algae bryophytes teredophytes we'll see each of this in detail okay in the next video we'll start with the thallophyta or the algae basic characters 
What are gams? Basically into two gymnosperms and angiosperms and angiosperms are further divided into dicots and monocots. So this was the introduction of this chapter. In next video, we will see on the next lecture, we will see about detail in algae. We will start with algae rather. So guys, hit the like button, subscribe the channel, share it with your friends, hit the bell icon for further notifications. Thank you.